is our blue planet. It's water, the essence of life itself. For millennia, humanity has relied on the bounty of the oceans for sustenance and used it as a pathway for exploration and trade. Even in our modern age, we continue to rely on its gifts to help our quest towards sustainable development. Covering an astounding 70% of the Earth's surface and holding nearly 97% of its water, the ocean is the blood that ties all life together. Yet astonishingly, we have only scratched the surface of its mysteries. We've explored only a fractionary 5% of this vast and hidden world. Hola from Barcelona. A Johnny Hands with our media partners. We're presenting to you the CGTN special One World, One Ocean, all the way from this beautiful coastal city in Spain. Uh, why Barcelona? First of all, it has a rich tradition of studying the sea and working on ways to protect it. Here, the ocean is a big part of uh, what makes Barcelona special, shaping its uh, culture, its economy and its way of life. Furthermore, the city is the right place to be this year for a very important event. 2024 UN Ocean Decade Conference aiming to tackle the most pressing issues head on and come up with the science driven ideas that make sure we can keep the oceans healthy for the future. The Ocean Decade Initiative is on a mission to transform our relationship with the oceans, aiming at uh, nurturing the sustainable growth while healing the harm we've done to the marine environment. It's a collaboration like no other, with scientists and experts joining forces to delve deep into the complex workings of the oceans. They are united by a shared goal to learn more, do better and create a future where humanity and the ocean can thrive together. We have uh, crucial objectives in front of us. Much has been accomplished for the ocean, but there is still so much that remains to be done and that can be done. I'm now at the Institute of Marine Sciences, or ICM, a pioneering research institute at the forefront of marine science and technology. As the key co-organizer of the 2024 UN Ocean Decade Conference, it has played an instrumental role in advancing the objectives of this very important initiative. Well, the ocean is a complex system by itself in which there are physical elements, biological elements, chemical elements, and then we need to understand very, the interaction between very different things. And at the same time, it is subject to stressors, very different stressors. One which is obvious is climate change, but there are others also, like the pollutants that we have, the overfishing, uh, and the degradation of the habitats. So all together makes that it is indispensable to combine different approaches to understand these projects. And in our case, in our institute, we are a quite large institute. We are the largest in the Spanish research system in marine sciences, in which there are physicists working, chemists, a lot of biologists, geologists, and we have an inner program to uh, help uh, collaborating between these different disciplines to, in different uh, research approaches. One of nature's most extraordinary marvels is the coral reef. These underwater wonderlands boast a quarter of the world's marine species and are a pinnacle of biodiversity on our planet. Yet their splendor belies a sobering truth. They're under siege from human-induced threats. Q 
chief among these hazards is climate change. As sea temperatures rise, corals face the harrowing prospect of bleaching, a dire consequence where they expel vital algae and face mortality. Similarly, climate change linked to ocean acidification erodes coral shells, leaving them defenseless against harm. Absolutely the biggest challenge facing the Great Barrier Reef and every coral reef on this planet is, is climate change. The water's just getting too warm and corals are very fussy and very delicate. And we're ju they're just unable to survive these extreme summer events. And that has got to be everyone's focus in coral reef conservation. How do we restore coral reefs? How do we protect the corals that are already there? How do we help the corals survive the heat? In the azure waters off the coast of Queensland, Australia, lies a singular natural wonder, the Great Barrier Reef. Reigning as the largest coral reef system on the planet, it is celebrated for its unparalleled biodiversity and ecological significance. The Great Barrier Reef serves as a haven for an astonishing 9,000 species of marine life, including a multitude of those that are threatened and endangered. It is a pivotal focal point for conservation efforts, as spearheaded by the Australian government and dedicated organisations. Yet, despite efforts to restore the reef's health, this natural splendour is facing serious harm. Right now, we have a coral bleaching event on the Great Barrier Reef in lots of places around the world. What we're waiting to see is, can we bring the temperature down? Will it rain? Will there be more cloud cover? And will that allow the zooxanthellae to reconnect with its host? And will the coral survive? If not, we will lose corals on the Great Barrier Reef. So every coral that's left, we've got to make sure that any other local pressures or threats are removed, whether it's invasive species or, or you know, water quality. But on top of that, we've just lost too much. We have to restore that in the same way that in Australia we have big bushfires. And after a bushfire comes through, we replant the trees. We have to replant the corals to restore these underwater forests, so to speak. So there are three levers. We have to continue to tackle climate change on a global scale. We have to protect every coral that's left and we have to restore and replant the corals that have been lost. Island nations such as the Seychelles are among the most vulnerable to climate change. We are island states and whatever happens in the industrialized world, we receive the brunt of the, of the effects. So we, we are now faced with coastal erosion. The rise in sea level is affecting our islands. This country that lies at the heart of the Indian Ocean cradles an extraordinary marine ecosystem that teems with life. Among the myriad of wonders, its coral reefs stand as a testament to nature's ingenuity. However, this paradise is not immune to the perils of global warming and other anthropogenic threats. The Seychelles Broadcasting Corporation shared this story. Sailing with your blues That's how I met you, my friend In the Seychelles Island. With the influx of visitors eager to explore the Seychelles Marine Parks, it is essential that the Seychelles emphasizes its importance of responsible boating practices. Proper boat anchoring is vital for the protection of the coral reefs, which are important habitats for countless marine species. Seychelles plans to undertake a comprehensive reach to reef R2R approach that addresses the whole island priorities of improved management and conservation of upland forest and agricultural ecosystems, as well as coastal and marine ecosystems. However, Unsustainable practices are still being carried out by users, and a recent governance analysis of the Santa Ana Marine National Park revealed that park stakeholders identified one of the main issues in the park being uncontrolled anchor damage to corals. In fact, the coral reef restoration project being undertaken by the Seychelles Parks 
and Gardens Authority, SPGA, funded by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP Adaptation Fund, is with the aim of restoring marine ecosystem services by rehabilitating coral reefs to meet a changing climate future by reducing the impact of climate change on the local communities and coral reef-dependent economic sectors in Seychelles. This is aimed to be achieved by implementing coral reef restoration through thermal tolerant corals as adaptation to climate change. The project duration is for six years. It started in 2020 and it will go on till 2026. And SPGA has targeted a total of 25,000 hectares of corals at the end of the project. The team consists of three scientific divers who ensure that all eight coral nurseries managed by the authority are well maintained. To date, the SPGA has planted out over 2,000 corals within the Curious Marine National Park since the project initially began, meaning that the authority has now covered 0.2 hectare. By the end of 2026, SPGA aims to fully have the involvement of the local communities and businesses in coral reef restoration, which in turn will lead to improved livelihoods with increased fish landings, access to new job opportunities and a standardized science-based approach and implementation to coral reef restoration in Seychelles and the Western Indian Ocean region. Beautiful ocean of my life The picturesque archipelago of the Maldives is also at high risk due to climate change. Here too, efforts are underway to restore its invaluable coral reefs. Maldives' state broadcaster, PSM, filed the following report. Coral reefs worldwide face significant threats due to the impacts of climate change and rising sea levels. The Maldives, whose existence is intricately linked to coral reefs, heavily relies on them for sustenance and economic prosperity. The Maldives stands as one of the primary locations most vulnerable to the adverse effects of rising sea levels and escalating temperatures, leading to coral bleaching and mortality. Having endured two major bleaching events already, we anticipate the onset of another bleaching event imminently. In order to protect our country, we need to work on ways to make our coral reefs more resilient, as well as to be able to make coral-friendly infrastructure to be able to keep up with the rising sea levels. Maldives Coral Institute, we're working on um, trying to build resilience of coral so that they survive future conditions, as well as using more resilient coral to uh, restore coral reefs. We are also working on coral positive coastal defenses. This will uh, combine the durability of concrete with the wave dissipating qualities of coral and self-repairing qualities of coral as well. So they'll be able to adapt to the changing climate of future conditions. We currently have coral restoration projects in Kaufertal Himafushi and Bayatol Fuladu. In Himafushi, we started last year. Um, in Fuladu, we started three years ago with um, Mars Global. It's a community-based project. And uh, we're working with the Island Council and community to uh, restore their damaged reef after uh, harbour construction on the island. And in the first phase, um, the corals have completely covered the reef stars and it, it looks like a natural reef. From when we started, the live coral cover has now increased by 45% and the fish abundance there has increased by 700%. So this shows that that restoration does work, but we also need to think about the main um, 
problem that corals are facing is the climate change issue and this can't be fixed locally. This is a global issue and we need the world to be cutting down on em emissions uh, so that countries like ours can survive. If nothing is done, our entire population can be climate refugees by the end of the century. The picturesque island nation of Mauritius is a jewel in the Indian Ocean off the eastern coast of Africa. Characterized by its volcanic origins and rich cultural tapestry, its pristine beaches beckon travelers from around the globe. Beneath its idyllic facade lies its struggle with climate change and pollution that echoes the plight of many ocean ecosystems worldwide. Yet Mauritius is taking proactive measures to confront these challenges head on. Let's learn more from the Mauritius Broadcasting Corporation. So refreshing and exciting to spend holidays on the coasts of Mauritius, an island of about 2,040 square kilometers. The pristine lagoon is one of the main reasons that makes the country so popular for tourists. However, this natural resource is also facing the impacts of climate change and global warming. One of the major concerns is the beach erosion affecting all coastal nations due to global climate change. It's high time that we have to put efforts together to find solutions to address this erosion phenomenon. Coral bleaching has become a major threat to deal with. Anuga, a Mauritian artist recently featured in a video calling for the need to protect the ocean and that the reverse process is possible to restore corals. We must write a song about the importance of preserving our lagoon. This video is produced by the Attitude Hotels, who believe that actions should have a positive impact on the environment. Here, guests and also local people are being sensitized and educated to protect the lagoon. We're going to see how this is being done at the Lagoon Attitude in Mauritius. Welcome to the center. You can have a look of what you can expect to see out there in the water when you go for the snuggling. We got the chance to fight back. We got the chance to let nature grow again, to the fish to come back again. Like we've seen in the water after COVID, like there's a lot, even a lot of more fish compared to what was there before. In terms of coral damage also, it was, it, I would say, it decreased. So this is why, for instance, for the snorkeling that we do with the guests, we try our maximum to tell them, to advise them, OK, please, do not damage anything, do not touch anything, let's keep it natural. The Lagoon Attitude goes further to invite guests to become more eco-friendly by using safer products. We have introduced a mineral-based sunscreen, which is totally safe for the corals, the fishes, the marine life, as you get in the water, completely dissolves and causes no trouble to any seaweed, algae. It's totally free of cost, which encourages them to use it more. Apart from educating and sensitizing, the Lagoon Attitude has been implementing coordinated actions, starting with eliminating single-use plastic. This hotel used to consume more than 680,000 pieces of single-use plastic in a year. So we decided to take this pledge and to remove single-use plastic. We have been able to convince a lot of our suppliers as well not to use single-use plastic and they are actually following us. With no many bars in rooms, guests are welcome to take things they need from one single spot. No single-use plastic and these have been replaced by the pots. We have been doing lots of trainings with the family members and uh, yes, they've been concerned about it. After the implementation of the small actions in the Lagoon Attitude Hotel, the results are being seen today. It takes simple actions to make a positive impact, and all those actions combined together will make a better impact to protect the oceans. Rishi Gopal from the Mauritius Broadcasting Corporation.
Plastic waste presents a huge challenge for the oceans, with a shocking 80% of the marine pollution coming from it. Imagine this. Every year, between 8 to 10 million metric tons of plastic are dumped into the ocean. That's like a garbage truck full of plastic emptying its load into the ocean every minute. It's a growing crisis that demands our urgent attention. Alarming projections indicate that by 2050, plastic may overweigh all fish in the sea. And while plastic may take centuries to degrade, its insidious legacy persists in the form of microplastics that infiltrate every corner of the marine environment. In 2060, we will be producing three times more plastic than we are today. Um, plastic pollution has an extremely de devastating effect on our ecosystems, on climate, the economy and on our health. When we take our walks on beaches, when we take our walks in forests and in different ecosystems, we see plastic everywhere. It is ruining our uh, harmony with nature. In March 2022, the, the UN Environment Assembly took decisive action by adopting a resolution to establish the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee. Charged with the crucial mandate, the INC is tasked with crafting a legally binding instrument to address the pervasive menace of plastic pollution, particularly in our precious marine environments. In the uh, final text, we hope there will be ambitious targets with accelerated timelines to reach them. There will, of course, be national plans and legislation that member states will have to undertake. Uh, but with regards to national circumstances, uh, we also will have obligations under the instrument that can be translated into national le legislation, which will enable change. A promising public-private partnership in southeast China's coastal city of Taizhou may have found the key to the plastic problem. Their innovative solution has been awarded with UN's highest environmental honor and helps locals turn waste into wealth. CGTN's Zhu Luoman tells the story. Floating bottles can be a romantic sign on the internet, but plastic waste is disastrous from a rain ecosystem and the propellers of sailing vessels. How can we incentivize the public to collect and recycle bottles? while at the same time disincentivize fleets for leaving waste in the ocean. Environmental protection and economic benefits can go hand in hand. I think that's why this project won the award. It's worthy of global promotion. Lanzing technology found a way. In partnership with the Zhejiang local government, they're able to predict and monitor the amount of waste each boat brings back, according to the time spent at sea. Fleets suspected of littering will be issued with warnings. But deterrence alone is not enough. Existing plastic waste needs to be removed from the ocean, and a business model is desperately needed. The added value of the end products made by marine waste plastic not only boosts recycling efficiency, but it also motivates people to collect it. It's a system that is sustainable in the long term. Landing Technology has set up a digital platform which can document the location of the collection, calculate its carbon footprint, and get it certified with the recycled sources. Once the whole process is traceable and certified, the end product will garner the attention of companies valuing environmental and sustainability standards in their supply chain procurement. The solution has boosted the price of recycled plastic products, some at a staggering 165% of the market price. The program not only boosted our income, but also changed our perception of environmental protection. The elevated prices help increase the profits for frontline collectors, most of them living within the low-income bracket. More than 200 companies are now involved in the recycled plastic supply chain, cutting almost 3,000 tons of carbon emissions. 
And more than 280 ports along China's coastlines are expected to pick up this mechanism by 2025. Plastic pollution will undoubtedly continue to be a global challenge. But this innovative solution from a small fishing city in China is an important first step to saving our planet. Whales stand as majestic guardians of the ocean, playing a pivotal role in maintaining the delicate balance and vitality of its ecosystem. We can basically say healthy whales, healthy oceans, healthy humans. Whales now face a more and diverse threat than when I started th th 30 years ago. I mean, we have, certainly we have climate change. We'll talk about more about that. We have pollution. Alas, the oceans are downhill from everything and gravity never sleeps. So the detritus of our lifestyle inexorably works its way down into the ocean. And you have physical pollution where you've got lines and nets, and then you've got a, a sort of toxicological pollution from different chemicals, including plastics. Dr. Kerr and his team have pioneered groundbreaking advancements in whale research. Harnessing the freedom provided by drones they have unlocked new insights into these magnificent creatures. I'm very excited by, by the drone world and, and um, the, the principal company I've been working with is a Chinese company called DJI. And the fascinating thing about drones is um, you can use them from a multitude of things. So one of my great interests initially was doing a, a, a health assessment of whales that actually whale exhalations are full of this priceless data, DNA, hormones, microbiomes, and we can actually do a health assessment by collecting this, this exhalation, a whale snot. So we developed a drone that we called Snotbot, um, and, and Snotbot flies into the exhalation of the whale with just Petri dishes on it, and those Petri dishes collect the exhalation. We can really do quite a comprehensive health assessment with this tool. Their work underscores the transformative potential of collaboration. And for Dr. Kerr, the future hinges upon working together. I really believe the new model of science, which I think is going to evolve with technology and even potentially citizen science, it's all about collaboration. Occasionally, scientists aren't good collaborators because they're trying to make a discovery that will help them fund their work and help separate them from the crowd. But I think the future is sort of serial collaboration between groups around the world um, with a common goal in mind. of our ocean is vital to the Earth's future and urgent action is essential. We must fight pollution, support sustainable fishing and tackle climate change. And raising awareness and building international unity are also extremely important. Well, ocean conservation is not just about sea life. It's about ensuring a thriving and shared future for all of us on this blue planet. This is our goal and also the only way out, a community with a shared future for mankind.